and uh, welcome to Great Keppel Island. We just arrived here about an hour ago and we got um, Freya sitting out there at anchor and uh, we caught a little tender in on the beach just to stretch our legs and go for a bit of a walk up to the lighthouse. Last year when we were here we did a number of walks. Um, the lighthouse walk uh, is about 13 kilometers from Vincent's Beach. Today we're anchored in Wreck Bay. We just arrived this morning from Hanukki Island which is also part of the Kimmel Island group. A few weeks ago we spent some time in the Bunker Island group uh, which includes the Musgrave Island and uh, also um, the Fitzroy Reef. We've been uh, pretty fortunate with good fish and uh, in the last few days while we were over at uh, Hamaki Island we even managed to get some painted crayfish which we had for dinner last night which was delicious. So um, yeah we're going to stretch our legs and uh, later on in this episode we're going to show you a bit of our pilot house so you see how we run and operate the boat from the navigational point of view. Okay enjoy guys. taken the tender in just to stretch our legs a bit, brought our cameras just in case we see some seabirds, but what we got to witness was something extraordinary. Watching these baby turtles early morning just after sunrise make their way to sea and the first encounter with the ocean was something that took our breath away. Lady Musgrove Island is a place where you can see turtles all year round. The green, the loggerhead and even the endangered hawksbill turtle reside in the area. We got to witness turtles laying their eggs on Gloucester Island late last year. So to see the complete circle was amazing for us. Only one out of a thousand hatchling make it to the breeding age of 30. So whenever you see a pretty large turtle, know that many of its siblings never made it that far. Visibility is often fantastic. We see different types of shark, very often wobbegong sharks, and the white tip reef shark. Obviously turtles, they're quite curious and sometimes very plastic. And it's remarkable now when we've seen them as babies and to know that some of them come back 30 years later to lay their eggs and breed. The fish life is wonderful. You can often see new fantastic faces and in this scenario you're looking at a harlequin tusk fish that was very curious when Nick put his GoPro camera just outside his little home and it was just as colourful as he's in this footage. We did find that it was a good way to make the fish come to you was to leave the GoPro set up and then just come back a little while later. After we had been to Lady Musgrave Island, we went to Fitzroy Reef, Masthead Island, Norwest Island, and then on towards Great Keppel. We also stopped in at Hamaki Island for about three nights. Hamaki Island uh, was a new anchorage for us this time around. We haven't stopped there before. We passed by on our way to the Keppels, but we managed to have three really enjoyable nights here. Um, anchored in a good sandy hold in about eight meters depth, and we were on three meter tides when we were there but we felt really safe and we have very little roll, which for us is always a bonus. Hamaki Island is about seven miles northwest of Cape Capricorn. 
It's a very attractive island and the beach is fantastic, quite easy to get to shore. Hamaki Island uh, offers a very protective anchorage, especially from the southeast and the southwest winds. Well, good evening and uh, greetings from uh, Hamaki Island. It's in the Coral Sea and uh, bottom of the Great Barrier Reef, about seven nautical miles off Gladstone. Uh, we've been here now for three nights and we've enjoyed some beautiful hiking up to the lookouts and um, Nick has been spear fishing. we've been doing a bit of fishing and yeah, just generally soaking up the atmosphere. It's a nice protected little anchorage, um, anchoring in sand, about six meters, so it's pretty good for us. And uh, we um, have had a couple of mornings when it's been down to about eight degrees Celsius, so therefore I'm pretty rugged up. I'm trying to catch a bit of a fish myself, got some bait on the hook here, hoping to get a, a snapper or some sort. So um, Nick has gone for another spear fish this afternoon and um, We'll be having crayfish today for dinner because um, we managed to get two yesterday. So pretty pretty stoked about that. But yeah, put Hamaki Island on your on your map, guys. If you're heading north towards um, with Sunday, so Cape also even further, it's definitely worth a stop. Cheers, bye. Whenever we can, we try to go ashore for a bit of a walk, even if there are no tracks. We make our own. On Hamaki Island there are no tracks as such, but you can do a fair few good rock scrambles if you're willing to challenge yourself a bit. You're walking amongst this beautiful bushland of grass trees and the views are certainly worth it once you reach the outlook. It's a bit of a sense of freedom and, I don't know, something special about going somewhere where there are no tracks when you feel like you're creating your own. And I'm sure we're not the first people to go up to those boulders, but it certainly felt like it. Flying the drone gives us a great understanding of the landscape around us and it also can give us good ideas of where to anchor next time. There are a couple of caves on the eastern side of the island that we saw as we went past with Freya. We took the tender around one day, the swell was right down so we could go right into the cave which normally is quite prone to the east swell. We went right in the cave, so deep that we could barely see the light from the outside. It was remarkable, and at some point we hope we can go back and snorkel or dive this spectacular cave. Hopefully with someone else on the lookout for us. We liked it so much that the following day we took our kayaks around to see if we could have that same experience. Unfortunately the swell had come up so we couldn't go as deep into the cave without risking injury to ourselves. Our kayaks came in really handy especially when the tides are big and we want to go for a walk or explore. We can then pull them right up on the beach, be away for four or five hours while we do our hike, and then come back and still have the kayaks well. there. Anchoring a tender with three to four meter tides can be high, and it can either mean that you have the tender high and dry, or that you come back and have to swim out to your tender, and that's not always what you want to do. The kayaks we always see is a bit of a good heart rate challenge, it gives you a good shoulder workout, and it gets us moving. Most evenings we have a fantastic sunset on Freya and that's a bit of a ritual, something we do each night. I'm cooking the rock lobster. So um, they're ready to go. They've got some uh, garlic butter on them, and we compromise them with some, uh, you know, sourdough that we put in some garlic butter and parmesan cheese on. And then we're just having a fresh salad with some spinach and avocado. And um, yeah, that will be it tonight. finished product. Painted Cray Lobster. Okay so we're uh, in our pilot house and we're on the way from A to B and I uh, just want to give you a bit of a rundown of what we have as a setup um, on our screens here in the pilot house. So um, 
generally run two screens for our um, Melionics, uh, one that gives us a bit more of a zoomed out view and then one that gives us a direct pretty close view of where we are and if there are any special um, obstacles are, you know, coming in front of us. These maps are really user friendly, the touch screen and you can zoom in and out and drag along so they're, they're great and they also provide us with our data of tides um, etc. <coughs> we can also see other boats have got their AIS on and, not, and it's very helpful when that happens uh, especially when you're navigating during the night. Um, so then we have our home screen here or our burning screen uh, which holds all the information through it. Um, you have the menu there where you can go in you can get a really detailed data of your engines uh, which is fantastic and we have our fuel system shows us how much fuel we have in our four different tanks that we can then pump fuel between and we um, have our water system where our black water and our water maker our fresh water we're on 72 percent at the moment of our fresh water and we have a water maker on board that can make nearly nearly um, five liters of water per minute it's currently running here but the guts of it is obviously down in the Lazarette so uh, that's what's happening this morning. We're making some water. We go by the rule of if you can if you can swim in it, then you can make water out of it. So we tried to make that water when we nice clear waters. Um, then we have our uh, power systems, our DC AC, and our generator, house battery bank, and um, all our brake is on the screen as well. Um, so when we go to um, switch on all our screens we go to this nav, um, nav screen and we press everything all on and all off so it's pretty easy to use. Uh, we have our VHF radios on here as well in our sound system and we have pumps and so on. So we go back to our um, home page um, this is our screen that we refer to before we uh, take off um, and we then look at our right hand side here. If we have all green lights, we're pretty good to go. Um, that's sort of it's a, a bit of a checklist going through the points that we want to have working before we uh, uh, before we leave. With engine and blowers and hydraulic salt water flow, etc. We also have a CCTV camera on the boat, and that can uh, monitor either our engine room. We have a zoom in function on it so we can be underway and move around in the engine room just without having to go down there if there's something in particular that we want to keep an eye on. Uh, we can also have a, a good view of what's behind us. We have CCTV cameras facing aft and um, that can be really helpful when you're in busy waters. So yeah, so it's a nice uh, pilot house to um, operate and we are uh, pretty comfortable with everything that we have on board in regards to maneuvering this boat. Um, definitely a uh, user friendly setup and we have our VHF radios up there and we operate with two. We find that a good um, good setup to have in case you want to monitor and uh, call at the same time. It's uh, pretty good. Okay, hope you enjoy the little intro to the pilot house.